So the sticker we're talking about this time is this Tony Magnuson sticker, this x-ray looking situation. Um, 1987, uh, designed by Francesco Jekyll Albertini. You know, I'll be honest, I didn't know a ton about him because uh, I haven't had this sticker very long. This sticker was expensive. Uh, it was hard for me to find. There wasn't a lot of them out there. It may have been 50 bucks. Yeah, I think it was $50. I'm, I think I got it through Facebook. I am part of a Facebook sticker collecting group, which none of you are surprised about. Uh, Facebook is the worst. It sucks. It's ruining the world, but it's the only place where sticker collectors can congregate and sell to each other. Uh, so I just was like, hey, looking for this sticker, put it on there. And that guy was like, I have it. And so I bought it. And uh, it's incredible. It's one of the best stickers I think I have. It's one of my favorites in my collection. It's so cool looking. It's so insane looking. Uh, Francesco Albertini also did like the H Street logo and a lot of the early H Street stuff. This is Tony Magnuson. Magnuson had, this was Magnuson Designs, which was his own company, okay? But then that turns into H Street essentially. So Francesco, who I read a little bit about him, he's from Italy and he came to America. And what I liked about his story was he just kind of showed up to skate companies and spots and stuff and just kind of was like, hey, let me do some graphics. Here's what I make. Check this out. Let me do some stuff. And like a lot back then, you know, companies were small and it was a baby industry kind of and they just let him and he made a lot of cool shit, especially like this graphic. This sticker, let's count the colors. Blue, black, neon orange, neon pink, white, Green, six, it's a six color sticker. It's based on a deck design, uh, the Tony Magnuson Designs deck, 1987. Uh, you can find a picture of it on page 181 of the disposable skateboard Bible. Right off the bat, this sticker, obviously it's a human body and you can see the lungs, the heart, the skeleton face. My first initial thought is the art of Alex Gray. Uh, Alex Gray, if you don't know, is a juggernaut. He's done tons of album artwork for the band Tool, which uh, I want to say this. Tool, in their concerts, towards the end, they give him a thank you. On like the giant you know, concert screen you see with huge bands, it says, thank you to Ale the art of Alex Gray, which, let me just say, that is every artist's dream. So... Uh, yeah, Alex Gray does a ton of art of the human body, but like the insides. And then not just the anatomical insides, but the kind of cosmic insides. Kind of the idea of the soul and sort of the mental astral plane. If you've watched Doctor Strange, great movie. Uh, stuff like that, kind of celestial other level consciousness stuff. And they're insane. They're insanely detailed. They're visually some of the most stunning things you'll ever see. If you don't like Alex Gray or you don't know about him, go get a book. They're incredible. Get a print, get a poster, get a t-shirt. Like, he absolutely rules. Um, this, this doesn't feel super, like, cosmic or celestial or spiritual. What I like about this is it kind of, to me, feels like what was going on in the 80s as artists were sort of thinking about the idea of humans and machines being like too involved with each other. And it was like this idea of machines taking over. And so you get this kind of over, like really computerized style of design. Like the way the Magnuson type is looks very machine like repeated. You have this kind of pulse shape at the bottom and it's like obviously an X-ray, which is like, you know, a, device that uses x-rays to look through you and it can give you cancer and it's you know a machine type situation so and that's what i like about this so much it, it's like 
feels like new wave and punk and almost like some of the early design that led to like the stuff you saw in like Radiohead covers and that kind of art. It's kind of like the idea of this dystopian society and humans trying to find their place in it, which I think a lot of artists deal with a lot because being a human being is pretty weird. We are this species that we're the most sophisticated animal, essentially, that we've found. There's probably someone somewhere else, but we haven't made genuine contact with them that we know of. And I think a lot of artists and thinkers and philosophers and stuff are try constantly trying to figure out what our place is and like what we are and like why are we seemingly the only animal that deals with this idea of like the soul and the spiritual and the afterlife and other planets and solar systems and this idea of like technological progress and creating things and inventing things and just we've changed the planet faster than any other species changed the planet essentially and what is that really and it's weird and i think being a living breathing person if you look into it the more you look into it it just gets weirder and the longer you think about it i kind of feel like the less answers you come up with it just stays weird we're just just like a super sophisticated dog that like is for some reason in charge of this planet and we're doing like not the best job but no one else is like being like hey we're the dolphins we're gonna take over so like we just keep burning stuff down it's like if an old eight track became an iphone like it was still essentially a shitty eight track but all of a sudden it worked like an iphone that's what a human is we're in this like garbage meat body but we have this weird brain that like takes us to these other places that are beyond being just animal and i think that's what this type of art is like thinking about and dealing with just like what the hell are we we sit there and we think about all these complex ideas but we're also just like a pile of flesh that can choke on a chicken bone at any moment and your heart will just shut down or you eat too much bacon and you die of a heart attack like it's weird it is a weird like kind of like dichotomy i think i think that's why a lot of artists make so much art in depicting humans and their bodies and flesh and stuff like that because it's just like a self-examination like it seems incredibly narcissistic which it kind of is but it also kind of makes sense there are a lot of really great artists that deal with the human body as mostly their subject matter you have people like jenny seville who makes these humongous paintings of figures i think they're mostly female figures and they're insane they're gigantic just i mean the paint alone probably costs a fortune and they're just overwhelmingly huge she also gets ripped off a ton a ton of painters rip off jenny seville but she was the earliest one doing that stuff and she absolutely rules at it you have like philip perlstein perlstein i'm not sure uh i think he was like 60s and 70s tons of really beautiful watercolors of people naked people essentially and he liked to do this thing where he had like three light sources so he'd get these weird triple shadows that are really cool looking and but everything he had like he seemed to be obsessed with just the human body and like flesh and stuff another really rad artist who does a lot of stuff involving humans is kiki smith she does stuff it's really she almost like dissects humans and it's like sometimes about body parts and the insides and and kind of like guts but done in a really delicate sophisticated way that's like really evocative kiki smith is like on some other level shit she's like one of the greatest of all time to be honest with you another thing this sticker reminds me of is the game operation like even with this little lightning bolt it reminds me of like when you do it wrong and it would go Bang! like that's what i think of when i see this another truly wonderful thing about the sticker is it has tony magnuson's like 
physical stats, sex male, height 5'3". I did not know he was only 5'3". I kind of think that's why maybe he was so good at, at airs on half pipes. Tony Magnuson could really get up there, like really, really high. And I kind of think that low center of gravity, just right near the board, he's just like a, a ball essentially shooting up the side and flying high in the air. So 5'3", weight, 134. Not a heavy dude. Doesn't say his... Oh, it says description, coma, critical, brain lesion, brain lesion. Yeah, it says like patient information, blood type, B positive, circulation slower, heartbeat irregular, coagulation time, transfusion reaction defective. And then it has like a number. It, has the st- it says his name, it says the mini, it was nine and a half, it was a mini model, so maybe it was for street skating, I don't know. But yeah, this design's insane. It's so good. Francesco uh, Albertini still works in the arts. He works in uh, advertising now. He's like a creative consultant type dude. Uh, but he kept working in skating. He did stuff for Vision and Schmidt Sticks. He did a lot of good shit. I also just love the idea of like a European dude from Italy just coming to California and like let me make skateboards. So you get this completely different perspective a lot of early 80s and 80s skateboard design it's sort of similar because it's all coming from kind of a west coast surf skate kind of aesthetic so his designs were just different as shit especially when you look at what he did for h street after that h street graphics they were so cool even the placement like i had h street shirts and it was like asymmetrical that logo is so good such a good logo i don't even care if he stole it like that logo for skateboarding was so rad. Like, this guy nails it, man. And I mean, like I said, it was in no way uh, cheap, but it was super worth it. Every time I look at this thing, I'm like, Jesus, this is so good. And, uh, yeah. So, essentially... Basically, that is why this masterpiece is truly one of my favorite stickers. They're all my babies, but some I love more than others.